Hello and welcome to the lecture on chapter 15. This uh, chapter is going to cover um, multimeters, oscilloscopes, and some other uh, test equipment as well. So um, let's get started here. Now AC test equipment really comes in two forms. Equipment that measures and equipment that generates. Okay, so um, We'll break it in those two categories as we go through this. Now, the multimeter that you used in DC is the same as the one we use in AC. You just move it to the different selector switch. And when we measure AC, remember what we're measuring is the voltage RMS, the root mean square, which is the equivalence of the DC voltage or the if we measure current, it's um, AC current would be the RMS value, and then the DC current is the, the equivalent um, value for that, okay? Now, um, so keep that in mind. Now, when you measure the oscilloscope, what you're measuring or what you see is peak or peak to peak. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind as we go through this, all right? Now, you can use an oscilloscope to measure DC. And in fact, we'll do that in certain exercises where we'll put the coupling to DC and that will show us the DC voltage. Then when you put on AC, it will show you the AC voltage. All right. And remember on our uh, oscilloscope, it's plotted on the time domain in the frequency domain, whereas in a, a meter, only shows you the voltage value. No, it, it's not in reference to any time. That's why it shows VRMS because that's the equivalent DC and that's going to be the value. And then there's some other um, devices. And if you take, or not if, but when you take a LEC 53, the communications course, you'll work with the spectrum analyzer that shows the signal amplitude plotted in the function of frequency. So it actually shows the frequency on the meter. Whereas an oscilloscope, all we can adjust for is the time. And then we know the relationship between uh, frequency equals one over the time and then time equals one over the frequency. And it's hard to write with a mouse if you've ever tried that. <laughs> but anyway, so there's there's other tools, the, frequent, the spectrum analyzer. Now, when we measure the AC, when, we'll do it this exact same way. Um, however, the voltmeter sensitivity, so remember in, in DC, there was that chapter where we talked about um, uh, the sensitivity values and how they're loaded, right? The meters are loaded so um, that the values don't just turn into, uh, like if you measure a 1K resistor in parallel with another 1K resistor, it's going to show it as half of that, right? 500 ohms. So we put it, the internal um, sensitivity is greater. So it's in, if, if we measure in parallel with the, um, infinite or a meg or a really large value, then we'll get a truer one. All right. Now they also make on um, AC equipment uh, what are known as these clamp on um, current probes. So you can put that around the, the conductor that has the current flowing through it and it will measure that. A lot of times in the industry where you'll see this a lot is in like um, air conditioning. So if you have someone coming out to your house to troubleshoot your air conditioner, a lot of times they'll, they'll measure the voltage and they'll clamp on the probe for the, the um, current because they're not going to open the, the circuit, put in a meter, then close, then test it. This is just a fast, quick way to get that on there. Okay. Now, um, the AC voltmeter is going to use the rectifier so it rectifies the AC and then senses the average value. So it basically converts it um, to RMS. 
Now remember RMS of an AC is the most used value. So like in our homework and on the test, if you just put voltage equals 10 volts and you don't put what it is here, the assumption is if it's nothing is written underneath it, it's assumed that it's RMS. If you want to say it's peak, then put a P there. If it's um, average, put average behind it. Okay, so you want to make sure when you, if you put just voltage, the assumption in electronics is that if it's an AC voltage, it's you're talking about RMS. Okay, um, now this is valid for, for uh, symmetrical waveforms, which means that the top half of the wave is equal to the bottom half of the wave. And sometimes they're not, right? Sometimes they're, they can be distorted. So, but keep that in mind. Our, the, the meter's only gonna do the average, even if the bottom half is not congruent or equal to the top half. So that's there. Now, there are frequency limitations um, when we use a multimeter. And it's normally uh, about two kilohertz above this frequency ac losses occur caused by the rectifier and the moving coil okay now on our um oscilloscope and you saw this in last week's lab where you started just measuring from the function generator into the oscilloscope we didn't go through any circuits yet but there's the um multiplier right with the on the probe the 1x and the 10x and that's where we can um, adjust that probe so that we can get into our frequency ranges that we need. Now, typically, voltmeters can measure voltages up to 1,000 volts, which is way more than any voltage we'll measure in um, our coursework. However, for higher voltage, you can get a higher voltage probe. So in, instead of 10x, it may be 100x. All right? Now, the... The, the meter, right, uh, a meter shows us what it, uh, our system looks like, right? What the voltage looks like. So if I, um, I'm just going to go to Google here. Now I'll bring it on the screen here in a second. All right, so like he here is a... Um, image from Amazon. So on Amazon, if you see this, uh, this is measuring AC, right? See where the, the meter is set to uh, AC? It has a voltage with the squiggly line over the top of it. That means it's measuring AC voltage. If it has a solid line, right, the one right above that, that's um, DC. So this value is 220.8 volts AC, okay? And that's what type of value? Well, of course, that's RMS. And then if we uh, look at an oscilloscope, an oscilloscope, and let me get a good image here. into it. All right, so this image is of an oscilloscope. And the, the scope here is measuring AC, right? And you can see the sine wave. So unlike a meter that shows the value in RMS, AC uh, provides a measurement of the current and voltage, but they allow you to see it. So it's a visual. And it's, remember, we have the two axes, the bottom, the horizontal is time, and the vertical will be our voltage or our amp, right, our current. Most of the measurements, we're going to take our voltage. 
Okay, so if the, the scope is going to show us the image of that. Now, to troubleshoot and analyze almost any electronic circuits necessary, know its peak to peak voltage, its instantaneous values, the phase relationship, and then the frequency and period. Okay, so those are things that we'll look at as we measure that. Now, all of these can be performed with the oscilloscope. Now, the oscilloscope, or the, it's sometimes just referred to as the scope, is one of the most important test instruments for measuring DC and AC quantities. And Professor Lagi can tell you that when they hire technicians in, in his workplace, one of the first things they have them do is go to the scope and, and measure the, the signal coming out of this source. So it's as simple as uh, knowing how to hook up the meter, the, the oscilloscope, um, connect the probe to it, set the time and the voltage, and then measure it uh, accordingly. I mean, it's just kind of a basic um, skill that you have to have. And that's why we, we use it so much in this class. All right. Now, it can measure both AC or DC. And the measured voltage is a picture. It's a, it's a graphic on the screen. And on the inside of it, if you were to look inside of an oscilloscope, here's the um, block diagram of the scope where it has a CRT, right? So like some of you that are maybe CNET students, um, the old type of monitors, the big blocky moni monitors were um, the cathode, cathode ray tube screens, and those are still used in uh, analog oscilloscopes, all right? So here's the, the adjustments for the time division and the position where your uh, image is on the x-axis and then the volts per division, which is your y-axis, right? So remember when we have um, here, this is our y and then this is typically our x-axis, all right? Now, the, the Vertical input requires two connections to measure AC or DC. They must be connected in parallel with the voltage source under um, test. So remember, when you measure voltage, say you're going over uh, R1, you just take the probe and you put it across R1, right at the bottom of R1 from the side that goes to ground then over R1, and that will show you the voltage across R1, okay, and so forth. So there, there's some, they, a lot of this is right out of the textbook. So if you read chapter 15, you can get some more details. The, there's not a lot of um, testable information in this chapter. So we're not going to spend a ton of time on all this. But now remember, there are other sources that we can see, right? There's, there's square waves and then there's um, sawtooth and whatnot. So we can see, we can measure it exactly the same way. And you'll do that in the labs. You'll see what happens um, to the scope when you change on the function generator from a uh, sine wave to a square wave. And then if it's uh, where the um, on off time is different, right? It's on for one millisecond, off for 10 milliseconds. You'll see that where it will, you know, look something um, more like this where it'll, it'll be up for and then off for 10 and up and then, and then off and this is our our binary right and we, we would have um our time divisions here where that would be one cycle so we would say this would be one zero zero one and then we can get the binary values for each value here so if we wanted to put this in an 8-bit um, binary to measure it, which we would see this in the computing stuff or in the digital electronics, it'd be 1000100. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. So, all right. Now, um, the oscilloscope has triggers that will show us um, a, a stable waveform. Now, sometimes in the lab, you're going to see the, the waveform is going to be moving all over the place or a come in, come out, come in, come out. And if you trigger it, it will, it will lock it in place. So um, that, that's what the trigger does. And then um, they also, most scopes, all the ones that we're gonna work with have two channels. 
So you can have your input and your output, or you can have the scope on VR1, and then down the line, you could have it on the capacitor or on the resistor or um, the inductor or whatever we're doing there, okay? And then you can have two channels and then you can separate them uh, on your scope or you can have them overlapping so you can measure the input output difference and determine the gain or, or the loss or whatever it is, okay? So those are kind of the basics. Now, the old style scope was all analog and analog uses the CRT um, and typical uh, scopes were maybe around 30 megahertz. So that means it can measure up to 30 megahertz. And then um, th those are very, very common. In a lot of uh, electronics classes like ours, they start with the analog. We, we introduce the analog because it's kind of the, the beginning technology that you need to be familiar with. And then over time, we'll transition to the digital. And the analog is it it is a skill set. You have to understand the AC electronics to do a good job of of measuring information or, or your signals, your voltage or your current using an analog oscilloscope. OK, now. The analog has given way to digital digital are, are what. If you, if you went to um, any electronics uh, reseller and you search for oscilloscope, the first probably 10 results would be digital and then you might find an analog somewhere in there. However, if you go on eBay and search for oscilloscope, you'll find a whole bunch of um, analog oscilloscopes because people are trying to sell the older technology. They don't use them very often. Okay. Now, when we convert analog to digital or digital analog, there's a circuit that's either called ADC, analog to digital conversion, or um, DAC, which is digital to analog conversion. And in the ELEC 56 class, the um, digital electronics, they go through that. They, they walk you through how those chips, and they're just chips, little chips you can put on a circuit board and then bring the signal in and it'll come out the opposite um, value. Okay. Another place where like in the, in the computer realm where you see this is on modems, right? A modem converts, it modulates and demodulates. So it modulates analog or, or digital analog, then analog back to digital. So it can be transmitted. All right. So here's the block diagram for the digital oscilloscope. So first it, you know, you start with your, your probe here and then it comes in, gets triggered, and then it gets displayed on your output. And it's, I mean, the output, the measurements, all that is exactly the same as it is with the analog oscilloscope. And you'll use both of them. And if you're like most people, um, once you understand the analog and you move to the digital, you'll appreciate it a lot because it's gonna be um, a little easier to uh, calibrate it and get it set up um, you know, with the auto sense feature and so forth. All right. So it, here's some more information on the digital oscilloscope. They do make handheld um, scopes. Uh, and some of this stuff can be very expensive. So I'm going to go to uh, fluke.com, which is the instrument for um, that you see here, right? This is a, a fluke digital oscilloscope. But if you if you go to Fluke's website and um, look at their um, instruments and then look at their products, so they have everything. So Fluke is is kind of like um, you know like for a car, we we commonly refer to the really good cars as. Uh, you know, that's a, the Cadillac of cars or, you know, something along those lines. The Fluke is kind of the high end um, uh, handheld test equipment. Very, very expensive, but very, very reliable. So when you get into industry, if you do some on offsite work where they'll say, hey, we need to send you over here or we need you to go up on the roof and measure something in the box, 
you're probably going to have um, fluke equipment that is uh, used there. All right, so here's a digital oscilloscope um, that is a desktop unit. This is what we have in the room, right, the Tektronix. Uh, these are great instruments. This is a four-channel oscilloscope, so you can measure four different values, your input, your output, your VR1, your VC1, your VL1, whatever you want to measure, um, and you can see it all simultaneously. All right. Now, here, here's a good kind of summary of analog versus digital. There's two major signal paths, the horizontal and the vertical. Everything must work at the same speed as the input signal. So you, it, it can't, you can't use a multiplier for the frequency. It's only for the, the, um, the voltage. Then all input channels are usually multiplexed through single vertical paths. The horizontal path is responsible for triggering. And then as you add more bandwidth or the more expensive bandwidth or the more expensive the scope, probably the greater the bandwidth it has. Most of our test equipment in our program is around the 30 megahertz. Although in some of the um, uh, communication classes, you'll have 100 megahertz scopes. All right. So here's some more. You know, people like analog scopes because they're very responsive. They're familiar with the knobs and switches. And the digital does a sampling, um, which provides some delay. It's a little bit slower. And then with analog scopes, you always have the option of picking up basic troubleshooting scopes at budget prices. So if you wanted to build a home lab, when I went through my um, electronics and computer engineering program at Cal Poly, uh, I went on eBay and I bought a scope. I think I got a 100 megahertz scope. Um, this was in the 2000s, uh, early 2000s for like a couple hundred bucks. And then I, I ended up buying all the test equipment I needed. So, because uh, I was working full time when I was finishing my degree and it was just easier to do some of the, the you know, I like to tinker on my own and I do that in my office. I had a, a workplace set up in there with all my test equipment. So people come in and I was, I was the IT director and they'd come in and say, what are you doing with all the electronic stuff? And I said, oh, I'm just working on my degree and uh, I want to finish it. And uh, this helps me see all of it. So you can get all this stuff pretty cheap. All right. Digital uh, has some key points that are benefit beneficial. Um, and you can look at those. And people like digital because they can automatically process and measure everything. And then you can get an output that can be printed. So like those Tektronix scopes we have have a USB port on them that you can save images to USB. So you can put a USB thumb drive on the scope, save your all your tests, all your measurements, and then put it on your computer and, and see those values later. Or for like a teacher, if you want to, to do the lab and then show it, uh, you know, the output, uh, you can easily import and export those. They make some oscilloscopes that are networked, either wirelessly or wired, and then you can save the, the information in, to a network share, so across the network. Really, really easy. Um, and of course, they can uh, connect to computers. All right. Now, um, we mentioned the probe earlier, uh, but the probe needs to be calibrated. So in one of these first few labs you're going to do, there will be a, a place where you will calibrate your probes. And one of the things you want to be sure to do when you first start uh, your lab, make sure you calibrate your, your probe. You know, there's a little place on the scope where you connect your probe and then it will say it's a, a certain value output. And then you just adjust everything until it's exactly what it's supposed to be on the screen. That way, you know, everything you measure after that is is correct. It's it's within the calibrated tolerance. All right. So you can see that. Um, so here's a, a scope probe that is compensated properly. Here's where you have this rounding, right? Or you have this cupping. That means it's undercompensated or overcompensated. All right. So, um, and, and you'll do this, you'll, you'll see this in, there's a lab where you'll um, take your, and there's a little plastic screwdriver, you adjust it right on the scope probe, 
and it will do the calibration for you. All right. Now, um, some other test equipment. And again, you will, you'll see a lot of this in uh, future electronics classes, the spectrum analyzer, which this measures your um, frequencies, right? And uh, now this is on the frequency domain, whereas the scope, let's go back, scope here, this is the time domain. So on, right here we have our time, whereas on our spectrum analyzer, this is frequency, right? So it's just a reciprocal, but it's a device that shows it. And then here's a um, digital uh, um, spectrum analyzer. All right. And, and for use, for those of you in the computer, you notice I talk a lot about computer stuff because that's my primary area of instruction. Um, you can use this to measure your uh, signal on your networks. So they make network spectrum analyzers that you can uh, plug in um, an RJ45 cable into it to measure your uh, actual bandwidth and speed on your um, computer networks. All right, and there's some information there. And finally, with the signal generators, uh, you can provide the source. So like in the DC class, we would use batteries or the power supply. And in AC, you're going to use the function generator. And the function generator, you'll, which is in room 405 on the bench, and it's also in room 401 um, with the analog scopes, which you were in both last week, or you will be in both over the weeks. Um, you can set those up to provide whatever with the signal that you're expecting. All right. So that that's it for um, chapter 15. And again, remember on um, Thursday, we'll meet for, for lab. You can pick up homework two. And I want to be sure to turn in a homework one. And then uh, on Thursday, um, evening or Friday morning, sometime in that time period, I'm going to make a video where I'll go over the homework. So if, if you have any questions, and then I'll grade your homework and give it back to you the following week. All right, so that's it for this week, and I will see you later, and have a good day. Bye.